setting up a all the mod server on Windows is pretty straightforward. Um, the files contained um, within the CurseForge download system under files is already configured um, and streamlined for a Windows server. So the first thing you've got to do is to download the server um, from the files. So they've got to click on files um, from the Minecraft CurseWord page and the All The Mods mod pack, which you can find in the links below um, or just project All The Mods. Uh, in this list, this is the client files. We can click on the plus one more and that'll bring you to the file containing um, what we saw on the previous page, version 1.57 in this case. This is not the complete uh, client set. Um, the, end, the easiest way to get into the Minecraft uh, client, and if you're already watching this video, you probably already know this, is to use the Curse uh, Launcher. Um, but that is not within the scope of this video, so we will not cover that here. Um, so when you come into this under the more files um, or the more plus one more um, you will come up with this page here which says server files so all we're going to do is download this it's 215 megs and that'll download the server files for um, this particular version after extracting the archive you download from the curse forge website um, these this will be the contents um, it's pretty bare bones, it doesn't have a lot of the other stuff that is generated once you run um, Minecraft itself. Uh, I would suggest um, simply just running the start file, um, but before we do that, just rename this auto restart file to, um, let's just call it back for backup. Take my caps lock off and then run the start file. What this will do is um, start the initial process, the initial run of the server, and as you as this goes through, you'll see that this generates more and more directories. In this particular version, um, there is a error, which may or may not exist in other versions of the mod pack, which um, attempted to append a non-starter appender file. So um, what we want to do at this point is not press any key to continue because that will restart the server again. We want to close the window down. Now during our file creation process, it's created this end user license agreement or EULA.txt file. We want to edit this. Um, in order to start the server and not fail for the second time, we need to change this from false to true. All this is saying is that you have read the agreement that exists at this, uh, this web address and agreed to its contents. Um, personally, I haven't read it. Um, before so I don't know what the contents are but I encourage you because you are uh, bound by law um, to read it before you change this from false to true. Let's save this file. Finally prior to running the start batch file to start the server a second time um, we need to edit this file here server.properties. Now in this file here um, we have got not an overly great amount of, of options we need to configure here. There are a few that are essentially as, uh, critical for the running of the mod, of the mod pack. Um, level type should be Biome SOP, which stands for Biomes of Plenty. Um, and that will, when it generates the world, it'll generate all the extra biomes that um, are included with that mod. Other options like max players 30 might be a bit too high for someone who's trying to run a private ser a server. So 10 is, should be pretty much your maximum. Or if you're only running with two friends, set it to five. Um, your server port, that number there is your default Minecraft port. If someone types into the client um, the server address and doesn't put their colon and whatever the port number is, Minecraft will try to connect to this port number. Server IP should be blank. 
um, for intent all intents and purposes um, and if you really want to you can name your world under level name there's something different to world not necessary I like to keep it as world because when I'm backing up or upgrading the server it's just an easy directory to find that will dictate what the directory is called within here world and let's run this the batch file again to start the server now while that is running I should go through um, this file the batch file itself simply a, a list of commands from top to bottom executed by the system first this is a label um, which you can see is referred to at the, the bottom of the batch file the second line is um, telling the system to execute Java with these arguments and then from within Java run the forge.jar file which starts the server itself a um, couple of important uh, settings here and the rest you can ignore which is XMS 1G and XMX 5G XMS 1G will simply tell the system that you should start or use a minimum of 1 gig of system RAM to execute and maintain the forge.jar program XMX 5G tells Java to use a maximum of 5 gigabytes in this situation now evidently um, well, obviously this is set uh, to 5 gig for a reason and all these extra arguments don't normally appear um, when you run Minecraft, a Minecraft server particularly one that's not modified and doesn't run mods um, over time we have tweaked this these arguments to be uh, what we think to be the best um, op options to run the server with with the, all the mod mod packs um, keep in mind that if you're intending to run the server and the client on the same PC because not everyone has two PCs you need to be aware that um, the XMX 5G exists in the client as well as a default um, and if you run the client and the server both with 5G and you've only got 8 gig of RAM um, then you may come into problems so just adjust these settings dependent on what your system how your system's configured um, and the third line here if not exist auto restart pause I'll say third line because I've actually got word wrap turned on here so if you turn that off you'll see that one two three so the third line if not exist auto restart pause that what that does is it looks for auto restart um, and if it does exist uh, it will continue to go to start and come up to here otherwise if it doesn't exist it will pause and come up with the expression um, press any key to continue and that that point that's when you should close the command window do not press any key because it will just continue to go down to go to your start and the server will run again unless that's your intention of course okay so now that our server is running um, we start up our client making sure that the version of the client is the same as the server we've just installed hit multiplayer hit add server um, call the server name whatever you want but because I'm running the client and the server on the same machine I can simply type here localhost done this will find the server and if I play that I will join uh, the server as per normal and I'll appear at the spawn point so from here we'll just switch over to the server itself we can see that um, we've joined here I joined a few times before just for testing purposes to make sure I wasn't lying to you guys or the, the video wouldn't go bad um, you can see that we've uh, joined successfully joined um, and from that point it's just a simple matter of playing the game so a few points from here guys um, if you want to play with your friends 99% of the time they're going to be doing, doing it from their own server oh sorry from their own client from their own home um, in that case you would need to set up port forwarding um, and in the area where you've got your minecraft server just created
they will type in your external IP address. So in order to find your external IP, there's a few addresses that you can go to. Um, I'll list some um, addresses down below, but one good, web, one good web search is to just type in what's my IP, and Google will tell you what your IP is. As long as you're not behind a VPN or something like that, that'll be the number that you type into the address for the server in the client, Minecraft client. Um, now, your friends are going to have to connect to you with that IP, but your router won't let them connect. And in order to bypass that, you need to tell your router um, to forward the port, in this case 25565, to your local machine. Uh, how you do that um, is basically by looking at any one of these guides. Um, it's not in the scope of this video, so I'm not going to go into that. There's plenty of uh, YouTube videos out there explaining it. There's plenty of websites explaining how to do it. And it really is dependent on what your router is uh, and what you're using. It's um, thousands of different types of routers out there and setting them up um, isn't the same in any way. But a lot of these websites actually cover a very large range of manufacturers. So you should be able to find yours if it's quite a popular or even not router. Um, and from that point, uh, you guys should be able to uh, play together. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comments um, and check out the allthepacks.com website. That's got more hints and tips as well as a breakdown of all the mods, um, mod packs that exist. There's five or six as of recording of this um, video. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Ciao.